So with a flush toilet, basically you take really nice clean drinking water and our shit and mix the two together. Both wonderful resources, when you mix them together you create a toxic problem. So with a compost toilet system, you're able to capture that amazing resource and um, take care of it and treat it in a way that removes any pathogens or problems and create a wonderful resource. You know, why would you buy in manure when you've got this resource right here? We basically use the, the style of toilet described by Joe Jenkins in his Human Your Handbook, uh, which is essentially just doing your business into buckets and covering it with nice cover material, most usually sawdust, and then uh, we hot compost it in a pallet framed compost. Composting toilets, like composting your own shit, processing your own toilet waste, is a real basic fundamental thing that we should all practice. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a simple way of being, of, of, of demonstrating self-responsibility. Um, it took us a long time to lose our shit phobia, our phobia of faecal matter. Uh, we've lost that now. Um, not that we handle it, we don't have to handle it. So welcome to our toilet. Uh, for a start, it's a composting toilet bucket batch system. Uh, we've got cover material, which we use old sawdust from the mill. It's already got bacteria and a bit of fungus in it, it's good. Um, our toilet is here, it's full, it needs emptying. So I'll put a little bit more cover material on the top, just to top it off. And that will just get littered and then placed over here until we have about 10 of them and then we'll make a compost. And so we put a bit of, bit of um, cover material into the bottom of the bucket and then back in here and it's as that easy. So you go make your deposit, put a bit of cover material on, leave it. And then when we've got a certain amount of buckets, we go to the compost and add straw and garden waste and kitchen waste and we make a, build it. And this is one I did maybe a week ago. Um, and we'll put the compost thermometer in here and see what we're looking at. We're still looking at 50 degrees, it's going up. It got up to 65 degrees the other day, I recorded it at. You know, there are pathogens you have to consider. There's roundworm eggs and all well, these different kinds of worm eggs that you can that can exist in, in your manure. And if you do a hot compost, that's the safest way because you can nuke all those things within hours. If you can't heat it up, if you don't get to that hot temperature, then you can just let time and microbial competition do its magic. So you have to leave it for an extra year rather than nine months has to leave has to be left for two years if you don't get it hot. So you build a dish, under, under there you build a dish, so any juice that goes on there goes into the middle rather than out the sides because you want to keep it clean. Um, then you build, I put, go over to the willow trees and get some sticks and put a network of sticks underneath to keep it up off the ground. And then I use straw or grass, dry grass. Over the summer I cut grass and dry it out and make a pile. Uh, and use straw when I haven't got enough of that, and then make a nest, and then put the human manure into the nest in the middle, and then layer of comp uh, layer of grass or a bit of more straw, and I usually chuck a little bit of old compost in there too to sort of seed it, and you don't need to do that, but I do that, and then more, and then more buckets, more of a nest, more buckets, and then cap it off with weeds and uh, straw and stuff, and then I put the thermometer in it because that gives us an accurate reading as to whether it's fired or not. So we've got 52 degrees after a week, so that's going to start to move down now. And over here is what you get. I'll put it in a bag, but you don't need to. <coughs> that there is about a year old. It's got lots of worms in it. Uh, we put um, all our garden waste and all our kitchen waste in here um, but the worms are a good sign if you've got worms it means it's not too acidic and mm, yum good stuff uh, and that goes straight on the garden and the plants love it and we love the plants <laughs> so we've been sort of doing this style of composting for about four years and yeah it creates a wonderful resource that we use on our garden when it's finished composting it doesn't look like 
or smell like anything like poo. It's just beautiful black compost. Okay, so I'm just adding humanure compost to our lower bed. And um, I'm just, I just dug that garden up and I'm just gonna sprinkle it around like that. And then I'll dig it in. And we'll just dig that in and she'll be ready to plant. It'll be perfect. We can use it on our garden because we've monitored it closely. We've watched the temperature. We know it's, all the pathogens have been nuked. Um, we feel confident in our process. Um, so we feel safe to use it in our garden. Composting toilets are integral to a closed loop system where waste is captured and reused rather than being sent away for someone else to deal with through expensive, polluting and energy intensive processing. A well managed composting toilet does not smell or attract flies and many people have them inside their homes. The first step in composting humanure is overcoming our socially conditioned fear of poo and viewing it as a resource rather than as a waste product. It's for everyone, everyone, who, everyone who wants to take more responsibility for themselves and not pass it off. Everyone who values their poo. <laughs> um, anyone can, can do this, it's just really a matter of being engaged and wanting to do it and getting the knowledge. It's a knowledge based system. Love it, wouldn't go back. Once you start composting you don't go back. <laughs> I value my poo. <laughs> I value your poo too, so you're welcome to leave a deposit before you go. It's sort of expected actually. Donation. No pressure. <laughs> you don't get your stage fright, do you? <laughs> hey guys, thanks so much for watching this shitty film. I hope you all enjoyed it. If you want to be notified when the new films are released, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel or you can sign up to the mailing list at happenfilms.com. I want to say a special thanks to Mike Davey and Patrick McKinney for their generous donations to Happen Films. So thanks again for watching guys and I'll see you all in the next film. <laughs>